so grateful to God. Amen. How many of you got a text message tonight, 530? Let's see the hands. You got a text message? All right. How many people did not receive a text message? You did not get a text message. You didn't get anything at all. 530, about 530, you didn't get a text message. No text? All right. Just doing a check. Just check, 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 check. All right. We're so grateful. We're going to prepare ourselves to go into the word. Such a sweet presence in here. We do want to thank the Lord uh, for uh, Pastor Calvin Berry uh, standing in for us tonight. And uh, in the middle of his family time, uh, we want to keep Alex in prayer. Um, he got into a, a, a very serious car accident and um, all his uh, airbags deployed and all that good stuff. He's, uh, he's all right. He's alive, but he's, amen, he's alive. Um, but um, he's very, very banged up. You know, his legs, you know, back got pushed in with the car hitting him and everything. But um, he's going to be okay, but we need to keep him in prayer. Amen. Hurt, hurt his back and all stuff. He's, he's our musician, for those who don't know. Uh, so um, we want to keep him lifted up. And uh, afterwards, I'm going to go check on him. He called me right before this and said, I'm uh, very banged up. And so um, we want to lift him up. Amen. And pray that angels be charged over him, that healing would take place faster than expected in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. Listen, we, we are on uh, a task of trying to get this understanding of why We've been dealing with it. Uh, last week, we talked about um, we are family. Yes? All right. We talked about we are family. Mm -mm. Yeah, so we got into it. We talked about family, that we're family. And I shared with you five particular, or no, three. We didn't get to all five. Today, I'm going to deal with the, the fourth one. And next week, we'll deal with the fifth one. And so there were five uh, biblical metaphors that the Bible talks about as benefits of being in God's family. And so we talked about family, of being in his family and what that means. And then we talked about uh, that we are his temple, that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That, uh, he's the, we're the called out ones. We are the church. Amen. That um, there's not this building, that we are the church. We are his called out ones. And then we talked about it, from the um, the body standpoint, that we are the body, that, that each body part has a function, that we have functions. And so we went through that uh, last week and on Thursday. And today, I, I thought I could fit two in, but there's so much around this particular one. Uh, I figured I'd just stick with just one for today. And it's just that he, that he calls us a, a flock. All right, he calls us a flock. And so if you're looking in your notes, hopefully it's there. I didn't get the check. Um, yeah. Okay, good. And we're going to be in first Peter five, uh, and the first through seven verses. And, uh, I need you to understand there's always been bad examples of leadership through the Bible, but such leaders were the exception and not the rule. And so God works through spiritual leaders for the health and the benefit of the body of Christ. And when we think as, be as believers that we can walk independently of such, we're in a dangerous place as believers in our journey. We're called by faith and we're called to be a flock. And where there's a flock, there's always a head in this. And God's called it to be this way. And so the Bible points us in 1 Peter 5 when we talk about benefits of this. And we need to understand that this is important because we're living in a generation where leadership is uh, viewed very, um, hmm, hmm, well, I'm trying to say a good word for it. Y'all got some word vocabulary for leadership, how leadership is viewed? Hmm, I'm trying to think of a good term. Um, they, there's some issues with following leadership in this culture. Everyone is uh, relatively their own leader, and they don't. It's hard to follow. That's a good way to put it. And we have a struggle innately to follow. But the Bible, the way God sets it up, is that there is leadership in place, and that that God sets this. And this is the reason why we're a part of church. 
why he structures the church in a way. And, and in 1 Peter 5, he sets it up. Let's read. He's, it says in the verse 1 and 2, uh, he says, And now a word to you who are elders in the churches. I too am an elder and a witness to the sufferings of Christ, and I too will share his glory when he is revealed to the whole world as a fellow elder. And then he says, I appeal to you, care for the flock. Or another version, New King James probably says, shepherd the flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly, not grudgingly, not for what you will get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example. And when the great shepherd, Jesus he's talking about, appears, you will receive a crown of never-ending glory and honor. And in the same way, you who are younger must accept the authority of the elders and all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate to one another for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble so humble yourselves under the mighty power of God and at the right time he will lift you up in honor and give all your worries and cares to God for he cares about you amen amen I will not be benign if I did not tell you, I would not, I, that I was like, God, give me something else to talk about. Uh, but as a shepherd of the most high God, and, and as he was leaning me to un get us to understand a healthy church, we must understand in healthy church, there is leadership. And, it's, and in these verses here, the command Peter sets down for us is order in the body. And he sets it up pretty good. And the first point, if you're reading, he says, elders are to care for the flock, to shepherd the flock. He gives an instruction to, for elders uh, to take care of the flock, to, to be able to watch over them. And the term I like, he uses elder. And, and I really wanted to go down this path to kind of teach you in a moment that the term elder is um, equivalent to that of a pastor. And the, so, so you understand that when someone is an elder in the church, they in, innately are a pastor. And if someone's in a pastor in the church, the term is also used as a bishop. And the same term is used as an overseer. And so they're actually very synonymous. They're, but all of them innately are divinely appointed by God and not by man alone. Meaning God elevates, God chooses, and God lays hands. God says, this is the person that I'm choosing for this time, much like he did with David and his brothers. They were looking for the right one to lay on. He said, no, 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 that's not the one that God chose. I'm looking for the one that I've chosen. I want you to know that elders are oftentimes appointed. Not, no, not oftentimes. They are appointed by God. I want you to know, if I had a choice in the matter, if God did not chase me down, I would do something else. I know y'all don't like me for that, but I'm just being real. If, if God did not tell me, I probably would have been a police officer like my father and my brother, or I would have done something else. I got both applications at the same time. My wife will attest. I got the job as a police officer to be a state trooper, and I got the job to be a pastor. And, oh, it was a tough one. I passed my physical fitness test. My mother tell you I went and passed the physical. I was going to be a police officer like my father, like my brother. I was going to be a state trooper, and I was excited. And my wife said I prayed, and I did not want to marry either a pastor or a police officer. She knows she said it. She said, I've been asking God why would he do this to me, and you're, you want to decide between two jobs that I did not want, either one of them in my life. And I said to her, well, guess what? I want to be a police officer. That's it. And, and then I went and laid before the Lord, and I prayed. I said, God, yes, thank you for giving me these two options because I know the first one is the one that I want is the one you want for me. 
And I can remember my wife and I praying, and we prayed, and, and the Lord spoke to me, and I had to confer and talk to her about it. I said, I, I think I'm hearing the devil. Because the, and I had to ask her, what you think? <laughs> and she said, I don't like either one of them. <laughs> and I said, well, I need to hear God. And I remember praying and the Lord saying to me distinctively, I've chosen you for this season. I, I, I've appointed you to do this. And I said, well, can you choose someone else? Because I don't want to do this job. I'm get, I would get paid it was the same money at the time, but within one year, my, my salary would jump up to about 80000 as a police officer. I was like, oh, that sounds good. But when God appoints you, God does it. And I said, God, I'll be obedient to what you said, and I'll do. But God, could you make it easy? Oh, y'all Y'all laughing. But how many people know when God appoints you, it's not always easy, but it is his appointment. And so the first thing I need you to understand is God says, I've, I'll appoint pastors and leaders to guard over you. Look at Acts 20, 28, and he says this, so guard yourselves and God's people, feed and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his own blood over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as leader. <laughs> oh Lord help me he said so the elders therefore don't represent the church congregation as an elected official based off the text it's the Holy Spirit who appoints those leaders in place now I need you to understand I'm going down this road because we need to understand why there's pastors why there's leadership and why there's this order in the church but ultimately it's to bless your life so the elders, watch this, or the pastors represent God and are to act accordingly to direct the word, which means that every decision I make oftentimes isn't always the most popular one. Can I get one amen? Sometimes I have to make decisions, and uh, most of the people don't like it. But that's where God has placed me. And so the imagery here is, let's go a little further in scripture so we see this thing. The imagery of caring for the flock or shepherding often includes different types of functions. The first one is leading or ruling. Look in your, if you're in your notes, Matthew 2, 6 is, and you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd of for my people of Israel, meaning God says, I'm going to pick someone out and choose them, and they're going to lead you, and they're going to guide you. Now, the difficult thing about this generation is nobody wants to be led. It's, it's very difficult. And so I, I, I need to really speak to you because I need you to know what God is saying in this hour is to submit yourself. God is our saying, learn how to submit and, and be able to let someone lead you down the right path. Now, when I'm off, you know, you, you, you say, okay, God, help him, help him. But when I'm on, and boy, Lord, I know the Lord's been leading me in this next season. This, he's just been with me. And so the part is help leading and ruling and guiding and directing. But then he goes on and, uh, and gives us understanding that not just leading, it's also feeding. The Bible says in John 21, 15 and 17, look at it, after breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, y'all know the text, right? He says to him what? Do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs. Jesus told him, Jesus repeated the question, Simon, Simon, John, do you love me? Yes, Lord. Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. So he says to him, feed my sheep. Then he says, Take care of my sheep. Jesus said a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time, and he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And then Jesus then says, then feed my sheep. So he goes through the process and says, take care. Uh, first, the first one he tells him to do what? Feed my lambs. Note, note a lamb and a sheep difference. Difference, come on, talk back to me. Difference between a lamb and a sheep. 
<laughs> a lamb is a baby and then the sheep. So he goes through the process of no matter where you're at in your walk, they might be at different levels, but I want you to still feed them. They might be as small, so you can't be so high that they can't reach it. Get to a level that they can understand what you're saying and don't be too high. Feed them at the lamb level and feed them at the sheep level. Take care of them all at whatever level they're at. So he gives them this, this point, and then he didn't, then he, so he tells us to feed them, but then he says, guard the sheep. And verse 2 of, of Peter, he says, care for the flock that, will, that God has entrusted you. Watch over them um, willingly, not grudgingly. So he says, take care of them, guard them, be careful to check them out and make sure they don't uh, stray off into wrong pathways, but guard them from seeing danger and un, you know, just watch out. Now here's the thing. What makes it difficult, and I, and I really wrestle, like I said, the Lord's like, oh, yeah, you got to talk about this. This is why it's so important not to be chalivant and gallivanting all over the place from church to church and place to place. Oh, can I, can I teach? I'm, I'm in the text. This is why uh, there is, has to be some kind of relate. There has to be a relationship if we're family, if we're sheep. How are you all over the place? I don't know where you at. So it's so tough today to, to really pastor people because they have a tendency to want to look at everything everywhere, the YouTube and everything's out there, and then everybody's your pastor speaking a word because everybody got a rhema word for you, but yet if something happened to you, I'm the one burying you or I'm the one at the bedside, but everybody can give a word. Now, I'm not talking about listening to a few messages here. Y'all with me? Guarding is because you don't know everything. You don't know all, and I don't know, but the, God does speak to me. And there is a circle in this pastoring thing. And you get to hear all the good stuff and the bad stuff. And so this text, the, the Bible clears us to say, care for them, guard them. Can I ask you, can I, uh, let me just, could you make it a little easier to guard? Just, I mean, just, don't be, it's so hard. God's going to grow this thing, and we're going to be other pastors. Can, can I just, uh, I, I'm giving you what God told me to say, y'all, so be, don't beat me up here. It, don't make it so difficult for, to be pastored, to be guarded, to be shepherd. meaning uh, stay connected if we're family. Uh, stay, if, if you're the body, we should know what the body part is doing. Uh, am I? Oh, all right, all right, all right. I got to move. I'm, is this Okay. All right. Uh, so, so the first, the second point is this. He goes in to say, be subject uh, to young, young men follow. So then he, he, he the, the point I want to pull out is, he says, the duty of the young men is to obey and to follow their leadership. And I said, oh, my, this is, this is heavy. I said, why are only the young men addressed? First of all, the young men are those who are most likely inclined to second-guess leadership. I looked this up. I didn't come up with this on my own. And so, so I found out that those are the individuals that have, they always have questions. And I believe it's just in our generation too that the youngers are always the ones, they got to question everything. They need to know why we're doing this, why we're going over here, why are we doing it that way. I think it's better if we do it that way. And so he says, he says just submit. Just learn how to subjugate yourself and say, I'm willing to subjugate myself to submit to the leadership that whatever God is saying, I'm going to follow because there's something attached to being able to follow what God is saying through my man of God. Through, uh, oh, gosh. Oftentimes, youth, uh, they oftentimes fail to appreciate wisdom in others. And the second thing, reason why I, I, I went and found out that women are not addressed because it was assumed that if the person or woman was submitted to their husband or submitted to the man or the, the shepherd of the house that it wouldn't have to take much. They would follow. So women weren't mentioned because back in the day, women would just be submitted and they were willing to follow. Now we got women. I was watching TV and it just, just I believe it's getting out of hand. 
I really think it's getting out of hand. Excuse me, I'm not dogmatic. I'm not trying to take you back to centuries long of slavery, but we got some real issues with women learning how to just be submitted and following. And I'm watching TV, and I'm watching this new uh, series on Netflix, and um, I'm watching, and all the fighting scenes are, is one woman, and she's learning how to fight, and she's fighting, but she's fighting all men. Oh, oh and she's taking them out. I'm like, dang. I mean, beating the men to pulp. 10, 15, 20 men are coming. And I'm like this. <laughs> this is some I'm, I'm now, I was sitting, I got up. I'm walking back and forth. This is some stuff. She good. Now, I know it's TV, but what TV does is tells a vision. And I believe culturally, we're, we're constantly trying to tell a vision of this uh, feminine, masculine woman. Y'all don't want to hear me. I, I I, I, that that, that can, can do all things. But the, the Bible tells us that this submission, and this is the thing that we're trying to, we have to get in our system, is being able to learn how to submit uh, to those that are of authority of us. And not, I'm not saying they're doing bad, but my God, at some point, you better, that's my pastor, I'm submitted. I don't know, understand everything, but the Bible tells me I could pray. And pray changes the heart of the king. And prayer changes the, it's, it's, it's all right. And so being able to understand, l let, me, let me give you scripture. Hebrews 13, 17. Y'all making me work so hard today. You're making me hard. So, yeah. Hebrews 13. Look what it says in your, your, your notes. 13, 17. Obey your, come on, obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls and they are accountable to God Give them reason to do this with joy and not with sorrow. That would certainly not be for your benefit. Look, I, I didn't make these scriptures up. I, I'm just putting them together to line up so you can get the point. He says, obey spiritual. Do what they say. I'm, 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 I'm really... Uh, I was wrestling with this text because it basically said that uh, at the end of this all, when God comes back, that there's an account given and I am responsible for what I gave you. I, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm responsible of whether or not I gave you the truth, taught you the word, and did everything you needed to uh, give you, everything you needed to do to grow to be who God's called you to be. I, I got really, I was like, God, wait a minute. This is difficult because although the soul is made up of what? Come on, real quick. Mine. Oh, me, we, me, we. Let's go, me, we, me, we, me, we. Mind, emotion. Will, intellect, and imagination. Come on, give yourselves a hand. Okay. So if the soul is made up of that, so he says, he, he says, the work is to watch over your soul. I got really challenged at that because if the soul is made up of the mind, the emotions, the will, the intellect, and imagination, God, how do I even do that? And he said, I was like, this is difficult. He says, listen, what you need to do is just teach them the word. I was like, okay, I'll try that. And he says, then the word should do everything else with their imagination. The word should do everything else in their mind. The word, you teach the word, and if they would submit and you'd hear my voice, and not hear my voice, hear God's voice through my voice, and say, God's telling me, get my stuff together. God's telling me we're family. Then why are you feeling alone? Because you're not in the family. I've been preaching being in the family, but you're not in the family. If God says that, and I'm saying you're in the body, you're a temple. You're like, oh, I heard all that before, but you have not done it, so you're not subjecting yourself or being obedient to what you're hearing. 
That means that you can sit in the room, hear the word, or replay it, hear it, and then not adhere to it. And that's why it's difficult. God's saying, hear me in this season. I put a leader before you. I've given you the word. He's declared greater works in this year. All you have to do is decide in your heart and your mind to say, okay, I'm going to be obedient to see what God's going to do with this. And to let God work it out. And I tell you what, if, if we could get here, I, I like that at the end of it, he says, this is certainly will not be a benefit for you. Meaning there's a benefit connected to obedience. There's a benefit connected to being able to subject yourself to say, God, which direction is the house? If the house is all wearing white today, then guess what? Everybody should be wearing if we're all, it, it, it has to look like a body. You can't all of a sudden, you know, this one, the head's wearing this, and then the, you, it's misstitched on this way, this is stitched on that way. And you're like, you're like, huh? I mean, I remember one time we were uh, doing something outside, and I asked everybody, oh, where are you trying for life shirt? And somebody came in a different shirt, and they was, I was like, Well, one of these things are doing their own thing. It just can't work like this. And let me get to the third point. I, I don't want to miss this last point. This, this is the key, uh, key to it. Are y'all catching this? All right, give me, give me five minutes. I'm almost done. Here's the last thing here that he says. In, in these, he says, clothe yourself in the end of it, 6, 7. He says, clothe yourself with humility. Humble yourself. Uh, he didn't say one. Humble yourself all. It was one to the other. All of you dress yourselves in humility. The way this works is, he says, I I'm not going to lord over my pastorship over you. He says, don't lord it over and rule over them. Humble yourself and be humble one to another. So, I, I, you know, he doesn't say, oh, go and hit them over the head and make them jump over each pew. And No, he says, he says, humble yourself. That's why if you pick up paper, I'm willing to pick up paper. You sweep? I'm willing to sweep. He says, all of you dress yourselves in humility as you relate. I love this because now this talks about the sheep and the shepherd. Uh, as you relate one to another, and he says, because God opposes the proud but gives grace, unmerited favor to the humble. So humble yourself. Peter's final focus on this is after you get an understanding of how to follow leadership, if you understand what you're called to do, he focuses on the attitude or the mindset which should characterize both the leader and the follower. A humble spirit is what allows us to walk together in unity. Let me take you to the last, uh, last scripture as I close. Philippians 2, he says, Is there any encouragement from belonging to Christ? Any comfort from his love any fellowship together in the spirit are your hearts tender and compassionate then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other Woo. loving one another and working together with 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 one mind and one purpose one mind, one purpose, one band, one sound, one faith, one, one Lord, one. Oh, I, I wish I knew the rap. I'd go on y'all real quick. There has to be one mind. That means we all can't be thinking different stuff. If we say we're getting ready to go into TBI, the whole church should get ready to go into TBI. If we say we're going to go, it's financial peace, need to get our time to get our finances in order before December. Because December going to come, and y'all going to act like we didn't talk about it in September. Go, oh, I didn't, I, I ain't had time to take that class. I know they got the financial peace class. but I Are you serious? We've been running this class for eight years, and you still struggling your finances because you won't get in order with the house. Oh, God. I'm teaching better. Y'all looking at me. Mm, one mind. One purpose. 
And so if we can get this together, then we can be able to navigate and understand why God's called us to this church for this season, for this time, because he's saying, I want you to really minister to a whole area, but you can't do it divided. We won't, we, let me tell you something, people are going to be coming here real soon, and I, I, I fear, can I, can I share with you, uh, no, my fear, no, my faith, I'm going to speak from faith, not from fear. I'm going to share with you my faith process that many of you in here are supposed to be in leadership, but your apprehensiveness causes for an inability to place you where you're supposed to be. Meaning, uh, 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 I know what God said. He said, we dwindled down. We came here with a small group of people. Then he says, among you are those that are going to be the pillars and to be able to lead. And when the seats fill up and, and, and a Thursday is packed, these are the individuals that they'll be looking to, to how they worship, to how they sing, and how they clap, because they'll be mirroring what they see in the culture of our church. But it's based off of who understands who they're called to be. So when I point at you say, this is what I'm, I believe you are, you say, guess what? That's what I'm going to be today. Why? Because that's how leadership functions. Oh, okay, let me, let me close. I got to close. Is this helping? Okay, let me close out. Third. Third verse, it says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Whew, this is hard. Because the hard, this, the hard part of this is closing this out is he's descripting this. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Listen, this is not about anybody but Christ. You don't, have, you don't have to really please me, please Christ. Christ is watching far greater than I am. All I'm doing is I'm the head, but he's watching how we serve. He's watching the heart condition of our servanthood. Oh, I got to close. I got to close. I'm, I'm too far over. Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. He's talking about being humble, y'all. He's describing out the qualities that he fu to function in this leadership process to be able to follow leadership. So that, I do that. I'm I'm worried about so I'm there's people I call them. I say, you all right? Yeah, I'm gonna be there soon. Click. I just want to hear your voice and make sure you're all right. If you're alive, I haven't seen you in two months. Some people are just Facebook, haven't seen you. Are you okay? Did you switch churches? Just let me know if you switch churches. It's okay. No, no, this is my church. Gosh, you make it difficult to pastor you. How do I pastor you and I don't see you? Oh, I got a lot going on. I didn't even know you had a lot going on. What's going on? Oh, I got this, this. Well, good gracious, thank God you told somebody. Now I can pray. The Bible says call for the elders. Let them lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Call for, I can send someone to your house. I can send someone to lay hands on you by the authority that God's get. Oh, I'm sorry. I got to close. I got to close. I got three minutes. Okay, you got it? Come on, five, come on. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to claim. Oh, my God. Y'all don't even understand how big that is. I, I wish I had just a few minutes to explain to you the theology reverence of that, that he is God, Jesus is God, yet he says, guess what? I am God, but let me show you how humility works. Even though I function as God, I still humble myself to God. Good gracious. So he says, look, I know how I'm supposed, I, I know who I am, but I don't try to cling to that. I still step back and let God be God and me be Jesus. So he says, instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal death on a cross. Come by to give God praise right there. He did it for me. The challenge for us in this season is to get into a faith to follow. To have enough faith to say, God, I'm willing to follow who you placed in this season over me. 
let me be a great follower. One of the things I, I, I wanted to do, you know, as I was learning, and I, I was an armor bearer, I worked on sound, I did everything in the church. Um, but one of the things I, I found very interesting is learning how to humble, I, especially when you get your college degree. Can I talk to some people with degrees? Once you get a little degree on your belt, a little something, something. It's something, a feeling that you feel, no? No, no, what, it's not, it, it's, it's accomplished, it's accomplished. And you get it, and you feel like, you know, you're like this, you know. You stick your chest like, yeah, you know. And so for me, and many of you know my story, when I graduated, I immediately went into a servant mode, and I became an armor bearer full time. That was my job. Yes, bless me. Lord, bless me. And I began to serve. I'm talking about everything from I was a driver taking the kids. I was, I was like, oh, God, why do, you, why do you have me here? And, and it wasn't until I finished that role that God said, the greatest among you are those who serve. It wasn't until I re, re, was reminded that he says, he, says, he says, and the first shall be last. And the last and he, says, he says, there's an order to my process. And serving, to being able to learn how to serve well, causes you to elevate it faster than anything else. And God says, once you learn this, that's how I can get you to lead because you always know how to follow. You missed it. Okay. So here's the thing. Some of y'all been with me to Jacksonville. So I went out to Jacksonville, hang out with my bishop down there. And I hang out. The moment I get around the, my bishop down in Jacksonville, I immediately turn into a servant. Immediately. I'm like, boom, can I pour you water? He, he pulled a pill out, and I had a, a water already cracked. He said, boy, you train better than anything I've ever seen. <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. I just don't know any better. He said, no, 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 ain't nothing wrong with it. I said, at the moment I, I get around the person that I, I'm covered by, the, the person who's shepherding me, the person who's mentoring me, I immediately transform into that of a humble servant. How can I be of service to you? What way can I serve? How? Y'all ain't catching it. So God's trying to say, listen, people of God, uh, look at the models I'm putting before you and catch this, that in this season, humble yourselves and watch what God's going to do because it's not just me, it's the other individuals that are next to you that God's saying, I want you to be able to serve, but if you got issues and stuff, if you got, yeah, stuff on you, it's hard. People say the wrong thing to you, and you get offended, and now you can't even serve next to them because you're messed up because you don't like their attitude, but he's saying, humble yourself, and I can exalt you. Oh, man, I'm, ooh, I'm over my time. I'm over my time. All right, I got to stop here. So listen, in order for us to get into this understanding of fellowship, we have to do it by faith. The reason why God placed leadership over you in the family, with the temple, and with the body is so that you can see what's next and follow it. In this season, I believe God's shifting us and getting us ready for something really great. But we cannot do it without good fellowship. This next season is going to require us to be able to fall in line and say, God, I don't know why you have me going to all these classes right now. I don't know why I'm in all these, I'm learning all this stuff. But in due season, God says, I have something set for you that's just for you, a reward connected to your service. Those who seek the Lord, he says, diligently seek me. There's a reward connected to it. And I don't know about you, I love rewards. God, send my reward in its due season. Amen. Father, I pray now for everyone under the sound of my voice that they would not just be hearers of this word, oh God. That we would understand that you're calling us to follow leadership in this season. God, that you would touch us, oh God, in the areas where we have pride, areas where we, our feelings get hurt. God, help us get over us and to think about others more than ourselves in this season, oh God. That when people come in, we could serve them, oh God, and, and share with them your goodness and encourage others. And Lord, they don't need to get to the pastor because they've gotten to the people. And the people have the same, the anointing, oh God, of the head is on the whole body. And so, Father, I thank you even now for what you're going to do in our hearts. I thank you for what you're going to do in and through us in this season. Be glorified in Jesus' name.
amen and amen. Come on, would you put your blessed hands together and thank the Lord. Very quickly, y'all be seated real quick. Be, be seated. The ushers are coming with uh, the pass out if you need an offering envelope. Oh, thank you so much if you're joining us online. If this message helped you, hopefully it helped encourage you to uh, follow harder by faith. I want to uh, pray for you that God would um, really cause for you to get connected to a church. If you're not in a church or you're not going to church, uh, you know, just watching church online is not enough. You got to be in the body, be a part of the body, a functioning part of the body, and have enough faith to follow somebody. All right? God bless you. Triumph Life is a place of people like you where we love God, love people, and serve the world. God bless you, and thank you for joining us.